Hey guys, welcome to the detailed version of my top 20 standalones. If you're just interested in hearing the list itself and no details, I will leave a link to that video down below. But if you want to know what the books are about and why they're my favourites, then stick around and you can find out. This could get lengthy, so you might want to grab a snack. So we'll start with the young adult standalones that are my personal favourites. The first one is Before I Die by Jenny Downham. This follows a teenage girl who has leukemia and she doesn't have very long left to live so she creates a list of things to do before she dies and so she's just sort of crossing off things on that list, things she wouldn't normally do, things she just wants to do before she dies. And I have read this book so many times. This is my original copy and the pages are all yellowing and it's all creased everywhere. And I also have a autographed hardcover edition because I just love this book to death. I think the reason I love it so much is because it's so raw and real and just it it made me just want to live my life to the fullest every single day and I just I just appreciate this book's message so much and it just touched me in a way that a lot of other books haven't. Next we have The Last Song by Nicholas Sparks. This is the only Nicholas Sparks book that I like and I think that is partially because it is a young adult book and also because it's very different to his other books. His other books are sort of all very similar. One follows Ronnie and her parents have split up and so basically she's forced to spend the summer at her father's beach house with her little brother but yeah there's a secret that's being kept by her father and this book is just... Oh my gosh, and if you've seen the movie, the movie is great as well, but I have never cried so hard in my life. I've, re I've also read this book multiple times and I just, I love it so much. Next we have a book that I haven't reread in a very long time, so I'm planning on doing that soon, but it's Stolen by Lucy Christopher. I remember reading this back when I was probably 16 years old, and I just remember it being so captivating and gripping and thrilling, and I just couldn't put it down. I think I read it through the night. It follows a teenage girl who gets kidnapped in an airport and is taken to the middle of Outback Australia and it's a letter to her captor so it's told in second person. It touches on topics like Stockholm Syndrome and all of that stuff and it's very disturbing and you sort of get very conflicting emotions while you're reading it and I think that's why I thought it was so interesting and so great. We have a favourite that is just everyone's favourite and that's The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Um, this is my hardcover autographed edition, special edition and I just love this book and I'm not ashamed of it. This is just one of those books that I could just read over and over again forever. It's just beautiful. I'm sure you all know what this is about. It's a love story between two kids with cancer. Next we have Amy and Matthew by Cammie McGovern. The US edition of this is called Say What You Will, um, but I just love this book because it just is so diverse and different from anything I've ever read before. It follows a main character called Amy who has severe cerebral palsy, so she is in a wheelchair, she can't speak, so she has to type out everything she wants to say, and it follows her in her senior year, and she just, she just wants to make friends. She's so sick of being alone with her teacher aides, and she just wants people around her, you know, people her age. So she gets a list of people to help her out during her senior year just to, you know, hang out with her and, you know, take her between classes and stuff. And one of the people who helps her is Matthew and he has OCD and it's sort of their friendship and what I didn't expect from this book is there is a lot of twists, unexpected twists, that really take the story in a new direction and I just, I just love everything about this book. I just thought it was brilliant. The next book is Pretty Girl 13 by Liz Coley. This book is one of those books that just you can't stop thinking about it for ages after you've read it and I only just recently read this and I still think about it all the time. It follows a girl who she thinks she's 13 years old and she's just finished at a school camp but she comes home and it turns out she's actually been missing for three years. So she goes to a psychologist and tries to uncover what happened to her and try to unlock the secrets that are trapped inside her mind and it's just, it's fantastic and I've never read anything like it and I am just 
obsessed and you should definitely check this one out because I don't think enough people have read this. The next book is Falling Into Place by Amy Zhang. This had such a huge impact on me. The last sentence, I was just in tears. It follows a girl and it's told in a non-linear way and you don't know whose perspective it's told from, which is really cool. You find out at the end, but it's really cool because you don't you don't know who you're reading from. And so they're basically observing in a non-linear fashion why and what's happened when this girl drives her car off a bridge. So she's in a coma and they don't know whether she's going to live or die. And it just follows uh, people surrounding her and why she did this and her closest friends and family members. Such a beautiful, exquisite piece of work. I just, I love this to death. Then we have The Sky Is Everywhere by Jandy Nelson. This is on my list purely because the writing is so poetic and beautiful and I just, I just, I think. It follows a girl called Lenny and her sister has recently passed away and she's sort of dealing with her feelings, um, her grief and everything. And two people sort of help her with this and that's a new boy at her school and her sister's boyfriend or now ex-boyfriend so it's sort of a love triangle and that sounds kind of bad but it's just really so much more than that and it's got such a strong family aspect and music aspect and poetry aspect oh this book is just stunning to read then we have Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell which is a story of two misfits falling in love in the 80s and that's all you need to know about it. It's just wonderful, beautiful, perfect. We have a book that isn't released until September, but I was lucky enough to get an advanced copy on my Kindle from NetGalley, and it is Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. I think it's my favourite book that I've read out of the 66 books I've read all year so far. Um, it follows a girl who has a very rare disease where she's essentially allergic to everything. Uh, so she's confined to her house it has you know airlocks the air is all filtered she can only eat very bland foods she has tests done every day to make sure she's healthy because essentially the smallest virus or bacteria could kill her so a new family moves in next door and she sees the boy outside her window and she's just immediately drawn to him and the situation that's happening with his family next door and they sort of start communicating through their windows and that's all I'm gonna say just you have to pick this one up when it comes out in September it's just absolutely beautiful captivating and what it's just my favorite book of the year so far lastly in my young adult section we have since you've been gone by Morgan Matson. this is essentially the perfect summer contemporary book I related with the main character so much in that she's very socially awkward and she doesn't like doing things that are adventurous and out of her comfort zone, but she's sort of forced to do that when her best friend goes missing during the summer and leaves her a list of things to do. And so she's sort of thinking that if she completes this list, it will lead her back to her best friend. This has a very gradual and realistic love plot in and it's just... It is just one of my favourites and I definitely recommend it for the summertime, or any time for that matter. Moving on to my new adult favourites. First one is On the Island by Tracy Garvis Graves, a book that I first read in 2013 and I also reread it last year as well. It is just... <gasps> it is a new adult survival story following a 30 year old teacher who receives a job over the summer to tutor this 17 year old boy because he's been out of school a lot because he's just received the news that he's in remission from cancer so he spent a lot of time in hospitals. His family is very wealthy and they offer for Anna to fly over to the Maldives to their holiday house to tutor him over the summer so she's like yeah I'm totally going to do this, this is going to be amazing. And what happens is Anna and the boy TJ, they have to catch a separate flight to his parents. So their small plane with the two of them and their pilot crashes after the pilot has a heart attack. And they're stuck on this island and it's essentially their survival story and, you know, <laughs> their love story. because. What, what do you expect is going to happen after they're stranded on an island for such a long time with just the two of them? And it's... 
it's just phenomenal. You have to read it. It's just exceptional. Next we have a book that's only available as an ebook and it's called Everything Between Us by Myla Ferreira. This follows a girl who's in university but she's sort of deferred because she has severe anxiety and she can't leave her house and I can relate to that so much because I have really bad anxiety and I get agoraphobic so um, that's the main reason why I read this book but it's also a love story and it's not just about the love story though, it's about her overcoming her anxiety and becoming a stronger person and I just loved it, I thought it was brilliant and so cute. And lastly, I realised that this has like a prequel novella thing but I still consider it a standalone and that's Maybe Someday by Colleen Hoover. By far my favourite Colleen Hoover book. What I really love about this is that it has a soundtrack that comes with it because the book is very music oriented so you can actually listen along to the songs that the main characters have written and it is just beautiful, fantastic, phenomenal. Mm. Next we have my favourite fantasy standalones. We have Graceling by Kristen Cashore which I realise is part of a companion series but I consider it to be a standalone considering it follows a separate set of characters and this book is just so amazing. It follows a girl in a world where a lot of people are graced with certain things so it might be something pointless like being able to twist your body all the way around but she is graced with killing and the king basically wants to hire her as an assassin. And she meets a handsome prince along her adventures and then it also towards the end of the book, towards the middle to the end of the book, has a survival aspect and it's just, it's, it's this huge story in this beautiful thought out world that I just love and adore. I just... <laughs> then we have The Great Zoo of China by Matthew Riley. This is essentially Jurassic Park but with dragons instead. The Chinese have actually discovered dragon eggs and have been like hatching them in secret and creating this huge park and they just basically want to be known for this epic dragon park, the great zoo of China. So the main character she writes for National Geographic, I believe, and they offer to fly her over to, you know, check out the park and the zoo and write about it and stuff, but things go terribly wrong. Uh, it's just one of those books that you just can't put down. It's epic, it has lots of diagrams and illustrations that really help to bring this story to life, and I just love it. I love Matthew Riley, he's just epic. He's just epic. And then we have another book that's technically part of a series, but whatever, and it's Warm Bodies by Isaac Marion, which follows a zombie apocalypse and a zombie and a human interacting, and it's very interesting, very politically based, very thought-provoking, and just beautiful, and it is forever one of my favourites, I just love it. And lastly, we have my favourite non-fiction standalones. First one is The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank. I think everyone has to read this book at least once because this young girl who is Jewish during the Second World War in Germany, she is basically hiding in this tiny, tiny house behind a bookshelf from the Nazis. And what really gets me with this book is just how talented and hopeful and inspiring and beautiful this girl is. She's just amazing to read from and she's so young but she's so wise and I just think this is such an important piece of writing that everyone should read at least once. Then we have Prozac Nation by Elizabeth Wurzel. Uh, this book is a memoir following Elizabeth's journey in America during the 60s and 70s going through severe depression and not having any help because back then there weren't really any medications and people just labeled them as crazy and I could just really relate to this obviously and it was just an unbelievably true raw account of what it's like to live with mental illness and I think it's very important for people to read but major trigger warning because this does not sugarcoat anything and it's very uh, 
brutal. <laughs> yeah. And lastly, we have a book that never fails to cheer me up, and that is Hyperbole and a Half by Ali Brosh. Now, this is told in sort of graphic novel y kind of thing, and it's essentially stories from Ali Brosh. A lot of them are so funny, but a lot of them are also very poignant and address the topic of depression and how she deals with it. And I just think this is excellent and I think everyone should read this. It also really helps for people who don't have mental illness to understand what it's like and it's also just a hilarious book. Hilarious. Like laugh out loud forever. So that was my detailed version of my top 20 standalones. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in my series version. Bye!